Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, guys, I'm gonna be talking about pretty much what I look for when I'm buying uh, pretty much a car from the auction. I saw a couple of you guys comment about, you know, what do you look for? How do you bid? All this stuff. I've already mentioned multiple times who I go through, which is Audubon Master. I'm not gonna keep going in depth. Just know if you go through the broker I'm using, you can bid on whatever car you want, but you do have to put a deposit. You do have to pay about $600 more in fees. And uh, that's just life because you don't have a dealer's license and that's just the price you gotta pay. So anyways, I have the car out here with me. You guys said that I'm tired of you starting up your videos in the garage. So I literally drove all the way out here just to start up the vlog. So yeah, here she is. For those of you guys who don't know what's going on really with the channel, some of you guys are thinking that, you know, I'm gonna stop rebuilding. That's definitely not the case. But you guys know that this is one of the builds that I'm actually gonna end up keeping. And if I keep a build, I actually need to save up some money for a new build. So some new build ideas, I pretty much put out a little uh, poll. You guys chose between pretty much an X5 and and uh, E36 M3. Most of you guys chose the E36 M3, which is pretty crazy uh, because, you know, another M3 in the family would be kind of crazy. But then again, it'll be kind of like Finding Nick. Uh, you guys know him on YouTube. He has pretty much the E92 M3 and the E36 M3. So if I get both of them, the only difference between me and him is that mine's gonna be rebuilt. His is gonna be bought. <laughs> only difference, but his is gonna be, you know, bagged and insane. Mine's is gonna be uh, barely up to standards because, you know, they're rebuilt. So I don't know, we'll think about the E36 M3. It is a beautiful car. I, when I drove Nick's, it was amazing. It was really fun, but I'm still leaning kind of towards an X5 or an E36 M3. It's between those two, I really don't know. It's, it's really what I find in the auction as well. I'm super close to being able to afford one, but I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Uh, maybe after a few more videos, I should be there. I'm just not there yet. Waiting till the end of the month, because you guys know how YouTubers get paid. They get paid by the end of the month. And uh, I don't get paid much, but it's enough to basically put down and get a pretty much really messed up X5 or a really messed up E36 M3. But in that case, I can actually bring you guys a really good build because, you know, the worse it is, the more content there is. Man, she's looking good from this angle. But anyway, so I wanna take you guys home, show you guys what I look for when I'm trying to buy an auction car. Uh, and pretty much so you guys can see my perspective because you guys some of you guys are messaging me on Instagram What do you look for do you recommend bidding on like water damage flood cars or whatever like that vandalized cars? I'll give you guys my personal experience, and I'll give you guys my opinion when you're bidding on certain cars All right guys, so we're on the desktop here. We're using OBS So uh, I can't believe this my computer can actually run this thing because it's a hundred and twenty dollar PC anyways uh, You guys can clearly see what I use this thing for <laughs> which is just for Fortnite. I have my Mac for editing. I don't really use this for, other thing, for anything else other than looking for parts, YouTube. You can clearly see what I do here. Um, but anyways, you want to go down to Copart. Once you're on Copart, typically what I like to do is I just put in like a few titles. The problem is with searching with titles, sometimes they don't actually show you all the cars that are associated with this title. So sometimes I just don't like to do it. I don't know why it doesn't always show every single car. So then I just go to like find vehicle, vehicle finder. I just search from here, honestly, it works best. So BMWs, uh, I'm gonna go over here to M3. So let's see if we can find an E36 M3, some of you guys have been wanting to see. All right, M3, there's 55. Um, I like to get them locally. I'm not really trying to spend a whole bunch on shipping. I think a max is like a two hour drive I would do. Okay, so there's one in each one of these locations right now. So yeah, clearly this is not enough for me right now. Uh, this one is really close to me buy it now is really cheap taking a closer look at it it says the engine starts which is a really good sign um progressive so it is sold by an insurance which is awesome so right off the bat i like that uh the fact that it doesn't drive is perfectly fine with me actually when i purchased my m3 my m3 didn't drive at all it just said uh, enhanced vehicle uh, but i want to go check it out in person and uh i recommend when bidding on any car Go check it out in person because there's a lot of hidden damages. Uh, so for example, this one's got some blown airbags. Not a big deal. Uh, dash looks fine. You guys know me. For me personally, I don't care if the dash is blown or not. The more work, the better. Uh, looking at the windshield, has an X on it, which means it's cracked. Makes sense. Uh, the hood looks like a s hood looks fine, honestly. But the headlights obviously not sitting right. So clearly, probably just missing some, a couple brackets. 
Uh, this pillar could be slightly damaged, but you can't really tell until you actually go check it out in person. The car is 97,000 miles, which is great. Only issue is this is a convertible. It is an M3, but it's a convertible, and it's an SMG transmission, which I'm not a fan of whatsoever. But if the price is right, uh, currently it's at 21. Ah, nah, it's really not worth it. If this thing goes for three, with the fees that you have to do as a non-dealer, you're gonna end up being at least at 4.45 for this, and you know. That's kind of high for a car you have to register as a salvage title, pay tax, and all that extra stuff for. You're going to end up with this car, um, if this thing goes for three, realistically, end of the day, you're spending around seven to get this thing on the road, which, in my opinion, for a salvage title, convertible SMG is not worth it. This next one here is uh, to my liking. This is something I would purchase. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is, this is too far. Uh, clearly you can see some serious frame damage here. You can see these pillars are not lining up right. The wheel, just everything. This is, this is just a parts car, 100%. But where is this when we sold that antelope? I don't even think the engine's any good to be honest with y'all. SMG, I think it's a DTC. Not a fan, not a fan. Alright, so, this is when your boy's rich. But, uh, let's see the damage on this one. Okay, so it looks like... Alright, so yeah, here's the damage. Um, quarter panel clearly will total out a car regardless of how bad the quarter panel damage is. That's what I typically like about uh, quarter panel cars, is that you can get this fixed up pretty easy uh, if you take it to the right frame shop and they just, you know, do some body work on it. Looks like also the wheel could have a little bit of camber, so it looks like maybe some control arms need to be fixed. But this is an engine start, clearly it doesn't drive, wheels bent, uh, it got rear-ended. It doesn't say anything about insurance, but I'm pretty sure a high-end car like this is from insurance. Uh, it would stay on the sticker up here, so I'll go check it out in person. Very low miles. Yeah, this car, it's already at 25. I'm expecting it. What year is this? 2018. I'm expecting this to be like 30. Around 30. Yeah, that's about right. $95,000, guys. That's crazy. Anyway, so that's all the M3s that are currently here. Let me show you guys uh, some other cars. So, some of y'all have been saying an X5, which honestly, I'll be down to do. Dang, boy. There's so many X5s. All right. Uh... We only want, I think, 20, 2009 and newer. Like the E6. I don't know. I saw the E6. I think it's called the E70. I'm not really too sure, to be honest with y'all. Can't even afford a 2017 or 2014. Who am I kidding? All right. I'm looking at the lowest value one because your boy's broke as heck. So this one, this is an X5 Sacramento. Okay. All right. Eh. All right. Well, this isn't really a rebuild. I slap a bumper on this car and it's good to go. It's a run and drive, which is really good for somebody that just wants to rebuild a car and own it. Uh, front end, I'm just saying it's the only damage, so... That's what totaled it out, which makes complete sense because it probably destroyed the headlight brackets and new headlights on these cars, like three to four grand from the dealer. So insurance would definitely total that out. Fender probably is messed up from the brackets, bumper. So it makes sense why a car like this would total out. It's just not worth repairing according to insurance. But yeah, it looks overall like a pretty clean car. It's not a, it's not a project for us though. We need, uh, we need to actually save a BMW, something that nobody would have ever saved and probably would just parted it out. This is, a, this is actually a pretty decent example. Um, all right, well, it's a run and drive, which is great. Miles is, is kind of high. Uh, it's a 3.0, so it's a six-cylinder twin turbo, I think. I believe this is a twin turbo, six-cylinder. I, I think they only come in six-cylinder twin turbos or V8s. Yeah, so this one looks like it's in pretty, it's pretty depth. It looks like radiator support, just from the picture, radiator support fans, condenser, headlights, both of them, bumper, hood, fender. Uh, this looks like a lot of work. From the picture, I'm already, I'm already expecting to take apart the whole front end. This is actually in Sacramento as well. I might. We might look at this. We might look at this. Uh, we have to go check it out in person again because we want to make sure the engine uh, is not pushed back. To like nothing really damaged the engine too bad. Uh, it is a run and drive, so I'm not really expecting anything bad with this one to be honest. I think this is pretty good. We just gotta check the frame rails, make sure none of those are bent. Another reason I look for frame rails, guys. I go there in person to check out frame frame rails. You have to in like a lot of cars. You have to move the engine to get that thing fixed. Uh, from what I've heard. I'm not a professional, but that's what I heard. And removing engine is no cheap cost. It's about like a grand uh, to two grand just to, like, just to remove and replace. It's not even like to do any work. Uh, so if I see a frame rail, I just steer away. I know it's just not worth the money from there. All right, we need to look at one that has more damage. Uh, come on, come on. It's only 20, 2011. I like this 2008. Honestly, guys, what do you think? What do you think? A black, we make this murdered out. We do everything black. Black grills, carbon fiber, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, black this out, get some black wheels. Pretty much put a whole bunch of tint, make this our stealth car. I think that'd be super dope. Make this our car that we take pictures with. I think it looks super clean. Get some rollers with this beast. I don't know. It's like the mafia type of stuff. I don't know. I like X5s. I just love them. I love them. I love how they're twin turbos. They just, I love these cars. Now, before we conclude, I think it's only fair to see if there is an Audi R8 because uh, you guys know that is my dream car. And if I can rebuild one of those, that would be amazing. 
and an R8 is typically something I'll be willing to go fly and check out. It's a car I'm willing to pay for shipping because uh, it's not much R8s obviously everywhere so finding it in your local Copart is not going to be that easy. They have the chassis I like which is the 08 to 013 I think, 2013. Runs and drives, oof. Runs and drives, minor dents and scratches. I like the sound of that. Damn guys, one day. Oh my lord. Looks like it just has some scratches. I guess that's what totals out a supercar nowadays. Damn. This is your boy in like ten years when he when he doesn't know what that oh guys look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my lord. This is like a this is a real supercar right here. I think we should check out one more car. Let's check out the I8 real quick. Looks like insurance already got to this one. Ah damn. See, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh hell no. This looks like electrical heaven up in here. I'll pass. I feel like I've seen this before. Damn, this thing got really got rear-ended. See, guys, when I look for cars, I look for something like that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm not even trying to deal with this, to be honest. Uh -uh. So, guys, after looking at some of these, um, you can see that that 1X5, the 2008, actually looks really good. But you still have to put in consideration that it could have some frame damage. From my personal experience, I don't want to purchase anything online without looking at it anymore. That's why I buy locally as well. So I can go physically see it and see if there's anything wrong with it before actually putting my hard earned money onto it. You guys know the 335i story, which is vandalized, runs and drives, everything's great. Picked it up, turned out to be a complete wire nightmare. The whole interior, all the doors, the quarter, everything was destroyed through bullets. So vandalism is a very general thing. It may look like a small little issue, but it could be so much worse. The 335 is a prime example of that. My brother's car, the F30, uh, looked like some very easy damage. I mean, it looks like a very easy fix, just a couple you know, body panels and that's it. Turns out there's a little bit of frame damage. Not frame damage, but pillar damage. Uh, we had to get that done at a frame shop. Uh, lightweight, you know, your boy went a little bit Arab on that, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we got a little bit of work done at the frame shop. Uh, my M3, I went to go look at it, I knew the damages, I knew what I was getting myself into, so that was that. But yeah, I would seriously consider checking out the car before bidding on anything. And if you guys are wondering what side I use to uh, bid on cars, I don't go through Copart, I'm not a, I'm not a dealer. I go through Audubon Master, so make sure you check out Audubon Master. I'm not really gonna promote them because they do overcharge. So basically, you're paying a $200 uh, to pretty much have access for a year, which is completely unnecessary. Uh, 250 documentation fee regardless. $300 uh, fee that constantly goes up, like 300 and up, just, just random fee just for using their website. Um, and a couple, I think some other little fees. So you're looking about six, $800 your first time bidding through them. And then $600, around $600 for every other car after that. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend buying any car that's not worth like more than eight grand uh, because it's really not worth your money. You're paying about almost six to, 600 to a grand just on fees because you still gotta think about co-part fees. You still gotta think about shipping the car to your house. So if you just want the car to your house, and all the fees paid for you're looking about a grand through Audubon Master. So for those of you guys who have a dealer's license, shout out to y'all. You guys are living life, honestly, because uh, it's a struggle out here. All right, guys, I'm over here in my bed editing the video right now. Um, this is why I don't edit on desktop. I like being in my bed. I like being comfortable when I'm editing. Uh, and basically, it gets me the end of the video. I did forget to bring up a few points. Some of you guys brought up like water damage and stuff like that. When it comes to BMWs and just German cars in general, I do not recommend buying anything to do with water damage. BMWs have so many electrical things, so many sensors, all kinds of random crap. Having water damage may be honestly the worst amount, like the worst damage you could possibly get on it. You'd rather honestly have like frame rails that are bent because it'll be an easier fix than trying to trace electrical issues. It's an absolute nightmare. I remember I had a few on the 335 that prevented me from passing smog and all kinds of stuff. It was a real pain. Like I, I and what it was shot up too. Like I was able to identify where the issues were. Imagine if it was flooded, it was just corroded somewhere you won't even know, tucked in somewhere. Like it, it's a nightmare. I don't want to deal with that stuff. I wouldn't recommend anybody dealing with that stuff. It may be different on a Civic because the wiring isn't as serious. Maybe you just like lose a door switch. It's not that big of a deal. But on BMWs, the whole computers and the brains run through the entire car. So it's insane. So yeah, water damage is the last thing I would do on any, you know, any high end car pretty much that has a lot of computers. My personal favorite is honestly front end damage. I don't like side damage because it could mess with the side pillars. I don't like rear end damage because it could mess with the, the frame of the car. 
I like typically front end damage. I don't end up buckling the frame rails. That's my favorite. Uh, those cars are easy to get together. It's just pretty much taking it apart, putting it back together without needing a shop. It's highly doable and it's something that I would recommend. So if you guys are looking for your first build, look for something with front end damage. A lot of people think that front end damage is the worst because of where the engine's at. If it didn't hit the engine, it's probably the best. I'm thinking about making a little bit of a cinematic for my M3. I haven't made one yet, like an actual clean cinematic. Uh, just, you know, maybe when I get the exhaust done or maybe something like that. You guys let me know. If you guys want to see that, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Smash that like button and let me know what car you guys want to see next on the channel. I've heard you guys. I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.